All right, our next toolkit entry here in Chapter 7 is called Congruent Triangles and also the Reflexive Property. So here goes, uh, Congruent Triangles. If two triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts are also congruent. And when we say parts, we, what we really mean is either sides or angles. Now there's an easy way to actually write this out. Rather than writing out if two triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts are also congruent. It gets pretty wordy and, and lengthy. We can also, this is the shortcut way of writing it right over here. And so basically what this means is if we have two congruent triangles, that means that we have congruent parts. So this is a shortcut way of writing this out in words here, and that's totally acceptable. So as an example, if we had this as a true statement here, we had triangle ABC, and we knew it was congruent to triangle PQR, we would know a number of things. First of all, A and P are the are angles that are going to be corresponding, so that means they're going to be equal to each other. Same thing with B and Q, they're the second letter, see that there? So these two angles will also be congruent, and likewise C and R would also be congruent. Also sides would be congruent as well. So AB, the corresponding side to that is PQ. Notice these are the first two letters of ABC, and PQ are the first two letters of PQR. And likewise AC and PR, that these two sides would also be congruent, and likewise uh, BC and QR. So that's the first part of this toolkit entry. Now about halfway down, draw a line, and we're going to add this into, it's just part of showing that triangles are congruent. And what we have is it's called the reflexive property of equality. And what it says is the measure of any angle or side is equal to itself. It doesn't sound very exciting, sounds really actually pretty obvious here, but, but here's how it would work here. So let's say in this example here you see a picture of a figure, and in it we have it split into two triangles. We have the top triangle over here, we have the bottom triangle over here, and you'll notice that they share a side. So this side right here is a shared side. They both have this side in common. And so if we wanted to prove that these two triangles were congruent, part of that we, we might want to use a side. And, you know, for instance, we have side angle side, and side, 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 all those different uh, ways of proving triangles are congruent. So in, in order to prove that, we could use this as part of that information here. So what we would say is, is that BD, line segment, is congruent to line segment DB, and that's because of the shared side. So rather than writing shared side, what we now write is it's called the reflexive property of equality. Also, not only is it true if they share a side, but if they also share an angle. So, for instance, over here we have a small triangle, and we have a much larger triangle here. But you'll notice that they both share this top angle here. This is part of each triangle over here. So, if once again, if we want to prove that these two triangles are, are congruent, or in this case they'd have to be similar, what we could say is, is that angle A is congruent to angle A, and the reason why is, it's the reflexive property of equality.